Batman. You won. One night, many years ago, in Gotham City, Thomas Wayne and his wife Martha were walking to their car with their young son Bruce. They had just come from the movies. Bruce was chatting away about how he wants to see the Mark of Zorro again. As they turn a corner to their car, they are met by a hooded gunman. They struggle before two gunshots go off. Bruce is left there, alone, with his lifeless parents on the sidewalk. Twenty years later, Bruce Wayne is now 28 and quite dynamic. He has traveled the world, training for a war on crime to avenge his parents' deaths. He is at the Ludlow International Airport, where his butler Alfred picks him up. The two drive to Wayne Manor, just outside of Gotham. Bruce watches the city from the distance. A few nights later, Bruce decides to begin his war on crime. He slips through the shadows of downtown Gotham wearing a hockey mask and black clothes. He gets into a fight that leaves him wounded and bleeding badly. He escapes to a rotting building and contemplates whether or not to continue his crusade on crime. Just then, a screech fills the area and a bat dives at him, knocking him into an old chair. In that moment, Bruce realizes his destiny. He gets to work. He builds his costume, his cape, his gadgets. Then finally, one more important item. He slams down a hammer on scrap metal, molding it into shape. As he hammers away, the shape becomes more and more clear. A cowl of metal with bat ears. Two months later, there is another man in Gotham City that is also waging war on crime. His name is Captain James Gordon. He's just successfully arrested a maniac that kidnapped three girls. Back at Gotham Police Headquarters, his superior, Commissioner Gillian Loeb, doesn't seem pleased, however. Loeb is corrupt as corrupt can be. Working with Gotham's top mob boss, Carmine Falcone, also known as the Roman. The Roman catches on to Gordon's earnest activity and doesn't like he is cracking down on his smuggling rings. In response, Loeb commissions another corrupt cop, known as Flass, to give Gordon a beating. Hey Flass, I have a job for you. Gordon walks through Halliday Plaza, where he is stopped by a police officer that Gordon recognizes. It's Flass. Flass violently attacks Gordon. But Gordon holds his own, surprising his attacker with his unequivocal strength. However, a cloaked mystery suddenly appears, beating Flass to a bloody pulp, then disappearing as quickly as he appeared. Meanwhile, a mysterious woman named Selina Kyle breaks into an old factory 
where cats are being manipulated for genetic study. She frees the abused animals and gets into a fight with the scientists there. Before they can overpower her, a gas spreads that knocks them all out. As Selena covers her mouth, she sees a cloak flap through a broken window. She smiles. Back at police headquarters, Gordon is wrapping up a speech about the hunt for the mysterious Batman to a group of police officers. What does he look like? Big black bat. Easy enough. <laughs> Gordon, a word with you. Look, if you don't start caring a little less about work, then hell will come to you. Commissioner, I'm a police officer. I know my job very well, despite most people in Gotham. Later that night at a dinner party, Carmine Falcone, along with the rich and greedy socialites of Gotham, discuss how Batman is keeping the honest cops busy. Suddenly, the window shatters. The room fills with smoke. Batman appears and offers them a grim message. Your days are numbered. Not one of you is safe. Falcone's men start firing. Batman gets away with only a few scratches. In the days that follow, Bruce recovers from the bruises and scratches. His butler, Alfred, expresses his concerns over his vigilante activity, calling it madness. Bruce decides to visit his parents' graves. Standing over their tombstones, he speaks to them. Mom, Dad, if I fail, then I can't wait to be with you. Meanwhile, Gordon, sent by an angry Commissioner Loeb, is investigating the identity of the mysterious Batman. After interrogating Gotham's district attorney, Harvey Dent, Gordon resolves that he's not their man and leaves, ruling him out as a suspect. However, the real Batman follows Gordon from a distance. Gordon and his partner, Sarah Essen, are driving their car when they almost hit a woman. Gordon, watch out! Gordon slams the brakes and tries to swerve out of the way, but he's about to hit the woman when Batman rushes in and saves her. Gordon and Essen pursue the Batman, and the two corner him in a construction site. He's over here! This way, Gordon! Come out with your hands up! Soon after, police swarm the area, and Commissioner Loeb orders a bomb to be dropped on the building. Then the SWAT team flies in, searching for Batman. They chase him through the rubble. Bullets fly through the air. But Batman summons a swarm of bats to attack everyone outside the building. And he escapes. Selina Kyle, having witnessed the construction site battle, designs a suit for herself. She heads out, ready for adventure and some fun, but mostly theft. 
Her first score is at Commissioner Loeb's residence. Catwoman, a.k.a. Selina, breaks into his house and begins stealing valuable jewels and statues. Batman arrives and the two fight. Gordon enters as well, having tracked Batman. A three-way battle begins. Batman helps Catwoman escape the building. Before she leaves, the two costume figures share a kiss on top of a gargoyle. Before Batman disappears, Gordon finds him, informing him that he knows Batman means good. The Dark Knight ignores him and leaves, but a piece of his suit with the Wayne Enterprises logo is left behind. Gordon as his next suspect. The following day, Bruce Wayne is training when Alfred arrives to inform him that Captain Gordon is there to see him. Bruce pretends to be drunk as he enters with Sarah. Gordon and Sarah are disgusted by his manner and leave. Bruce is impressed by his acting and relaxes. Two weeks later, Bruce is in an old cavern where he is slowly designing a cave, the Bat Cave. A short time later, Catwoman is making her next big score, the Roman's Penthouse. However, this time it gets worse as she is chased by Falcone's men. They move throughout the penthouse, chasing Catwoman. Batman arrives and battles Falcone's men, taking them down one by one. Meanwhile, Catwoman encounters Carmine Falcone and uses her claws to scar his face before making her escape. <laughs> Commissioner Loeb and Falcone meet to discuss how Gordon seems to be cleaning up Gotham too much. What's up with your face, Falcone? My cat got angry. Now, back to business. I have a plan to get rid of both Gordon and Batman. While Gordon is walking with his wife and daughter, Barbara, they are suddenly surrounded by Falcone and his men. Bullets begin flying, and Barbara is kidnapped. Gordon takes a motorbike and chases their car through the streets. Batman shows up and promises Mrs. Gordon to rescue her daughter. Falcone's men crash at one of the bridges and a fight ensues. Batman comes and stops them. Falcone gets away but finds himself cornered by Catwoman. The two battle. Finally, Catwoman knocks him out before leaving. Batman and Gordon find Falcone, and Gordon arrests him. You're under arrest. Batman, you can go. You've done enough for the city. It's the end of the year, and bullets are flooding through Gotham Reservoir, chasing after a madman using a speedboat. Gordon shouts to his officers. Stop him before he poisons the reservoir. The maniac turns his head, revealing his large, evil grin. Then, Gordon grins as well, as a dark figure dives in over his head. It's 
Batman. <laughs> 